Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Bohan and I'm an earthquake geologist. I'm going to start doing a series on the New Madrid Seismic Zone and now I want to talk about the earthquake sequence that happened in the winter of 1811 and 1812. Now I want you to understand that the magnitudes of these earthquakes are best guesses. We didn't actually have seismometers back in the 1800s, so modern researchers have to go back and use the accounts in newspapers and letters and journals and try and figure out exactly how hard the ground shook and where and estimate the magnitude from that. So now let's get into it. The earthquake sequence started in the early morning hours of December 16th, 1811. There was a magnitude 7.5 earthquake. That was followed a few hours later by a really large aftershock that was maybe even up to a magnitude seven. The next earthquake in the sequence, the next large earthquake was a magnitude 7.3 that occurred on January 23rd, 1812. And that was followed on February 7th by another magnitude 7.5. So these are enormous earthquakes. Some of the largest earthquakes to occur east of the Rocky Mountains since um, the settlement of North America by European colonizers. So really enormous earthquakes, and they were felt over huge distances from Charleston, South Carolina, down to um, New Orleans, Louisiana. This is not unexpected though. If you go uh, check out my video, East Coast versus West Coast Earthquakes, which I'll link in the comments, earthquakes on the East Coast are almost always felt over much broader distances than earthquakes on the West Coast because of the properties of the crust. But there was damage that was also done to um, structures. It was fairly minor, far away, but as far away as Cincinnati, Ohio. And also I have to check my notes, um, due to St. Louis, Missouri. So lots of, of things are happening and the landscape was really impacted by these earthquakes. So there were landslides and uh, bank failures all up and down the Mississippi River in Tennessee and Kentucky. And there were huge areas that were effect affected by something called liquefaction, which we'll talk about in another video. The Mississippi River was profoundly affected. There were huge waves that were reported by boat captains because of seiche or standing wave in, in bodies of water. But those were like really, really huge waves. And at one point, the Mississippi River even flowed backwards for a hot minute. So parts of the fault went across the river. They uplifted the downstream section of the river, which caused the river to dam up. It couldn't flow uphill, right? So eventually it had to find another way around and it cut down a waterfall and eventually flowed on. So stay tuned for the next episode.